Ready? Okay, my name is Harry James. This is my presentation about my project, which is a conversion valve for a two-stroke engine to run on steam. Okay, so the basic idea was to run an internal combustion engine on a different energy source than it was originally intended. Um, in this case, um, it was running on pressurised air, which is pressurised using electricity, but in the real world it would be used in steam, which could be generated in a boiler burning any fuel, essentially. Um, so the concept is to create a device that would convert a readily available engine platform to run using a different engine conversion process. Um, that means the engine could be found in any sort of two-stroke device, be it a strimmer, a lawnmower, an old motorbike, um, chainsaw, loads of different things use two-stroke engines. Um, they're probably one of the most common engine types in the world. Um, and the energy conversion process part means, so in an internal combustion engine, which is what that is, um, it takes in fuel and air mixture through a carburetor and burns that inside the engine, hence the internal combustion. Um, early steam engines use what's called external combustion, which is where you combust the fuel, burn the fuel outside of the engine and harness that, that thermal energy to pressurise steam to run the engine. Um, the valve that I've built allows the engine to use external combustion as opposed to internal combustion, as I just said. This means that the engine can run using much larger selection of fuels. So originally the engine would only burn uh, petrol mixed with two-stroke oil to lubricate the engine. Um, with this valve and a boiler, it could use that same fuel again or it could use coal, wood, uh, used car oil, uh, it could use vegetable oil, any, any fuel you could think of really. Uh, and then again, external combustion is the basic principle behind all steam engines and is the reason they can use solid fuels. Uh, there was actually a, a design for an engine in the 1800s that used gunpowder. Um, it didn't work though because the, the problem that he had was that he couldn't get gunpowder and air into the combustion chamber. So, should have copied me. Uh, this is my valve. Uh, it uses the motion of the piston to actuate and is variable by how far the actuator rod, which is this bit in here, um, extends into the path of the piston. So, a lot of people I've spoken to actually thought that the piston valve was connected to the valve in the engine. Um, it's actually not. It sits down flush against this part, which I've welded onto the top of the engine. Um, blocking off the entrance, and then when the piston moves up, uh, it hits the valve and moves it out of the way, which lets steam through, or air in this case, through and into the engine, pushing the piston down, cycling it over and repeating the whole process again. Uh, this is um, my three main components here. Um, this end cap and that end cap are the same, that one's just got a bigger hole than this one for the steam to go through. This hole is actually to locate the spring which returns the valve. Uh, this is the main valve body just after it's been cut. Um, after that I need to face off the end of it just to make it smooth. And then obviously my piston on the other end. Uh, this is a video actually of me running the engine. Uh, <laughs> sideways, thanks Tim. video, um, one of which is that the whole engine is held together by a big orange clamp. Uh, that's because my design uses four threaded rods to hold the components together. Um, and to get the engine to run there was a lot of adjustment involved. Um, and it takes about ten minutes to do that if the engine is connected together with the rods that I made. So I, I just clamped it. It was a lot quicker and easier. Uh, didn't look as nice unfortunately, but what can you do? Um, also, um, the flywheel wasn't straight. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, but I think it's because the hole in the end of the crankshaft wasn't drilled straight. Uh, the engine was very cheap, the metal's not great, it's 
It's a bit of a... If I was to do it again, I'd get a better engine. You know what I'm going to say. Um, so, onto the difficulties. The two biggest difficulties were the manufacture of the valve and the engine setup. So, machining the valve itself took a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, and a lot of issues came up that I didn't expect. Um, it was a lot harder to get the finish inside the valve body that I needed, because there's going to be O-rings running in there. So if it's if it's abrasive at all, it would just ruin the O-rings within a minute of running and I'd have to take it all apart and replace them. Um, I've got a few pictures here showing that. Um, this is my stock to start off with. Um, these are the three main components of the valve, along with the piston. Uh, the piston is made of stainless steel so that it doesn't rust. Um, and up here is the tool I used to cut it. That's a one and a half millimeter wide cutting tool, um, which I had to grind myself. Um, it's actually quite dangerous because that sort of tool is really um, delicate and you have to go in really slowly to the cut, otherwise it will just snap off and you have to make a new one. Um, a few of these others, that is the piston seated inside this cylinder, uh, just showing the fitment. And then the one in the, in the bottom right is the piston and its rod, and then the rest of the valve put onto the engine. That's the first time I actually put that together. Um, these are me making the adjustments. Um, so up at the top here, these are just a few different angles of the engine so that you can see them. Um, this down here is my flywheel calculations. I didn't actually end up using that because uh, to cut the flywheel into the shape I was working out, uh, it would have taken all day and I didn't have that sort of time. But at the bottom it, set, it says, uh, you can't really see it, but it says um, a part flywheel, so a ring basically, instead of a full disc, um, is 80% as good of a flywheel. It has 80% of the moment of inertia of a full disc, but only two thirds of the weight. So in final production, if I was to take this that far, uh, that's what I would do. Um, these four images here show the stages of the piston. So here the piston is all the way at the top. So at this point the valve piston would be pushed up as well and the valve would be fully open. So the pressurised air would be filling that area above the piston with pressurised air. And at this point it started to push it down. Um, so it's just cleared the exhaust port. So the air would be starting to escape but the flywheel would be carrying the engine over. Um, here it's just reaching the bottom of its stroke and then here it would be starting to go back up actually and at that point it would just uncover what would be the fuel and air ports at the bottom which are now the oil ports to lubricate the engine and on the far right that is the hole that drilled in the end cap to locate the spring which I didn't have originally it was glued on. Um, the future of this project so throughout this project I was thinking about how I could use my engine to sort of help people I guess um, and I came up with three scenarios that could be used um, for power generation. So if I was to build a generator using this, I could use it in uh, military uses, um, emergency search and rescue type uses, and in third world countries where uh, access to power would not be um, as, well, it wouldn't be as available as it is. Um, so this could be achieved fairly easily using um, so basic electronics from a car or motorcycle, the alternator, rectifier and battery. And that would give you 12 volts constant that could be recharged as quick as you could use it, essentially. And then it says just there you could use an AC inverter, which would not only smooth out the power, but it'd step it up to uh, household appliance voltage. Um, to do that, you'd also need a, a boiler to boil some water for steam. Um, like be an old gas bottle or an old boiler, anything sort of metal, me, metal, metal, and uh, <laughs> pressure rated essentially. Um, and then for military military application, you, you could use a more standard, elegant design. You have a bit more money to play with there. So my conclusions are that the project, although very time consuming, could be mass produced for a relatively low cost. I didn't spend that much on this, about £80. Um, from mass production, material costs would be lower, machining costs would be lower, um, the whole thing would be done quicker, it'd just be generally easier. Um, so my design for a valve works well, um, but it takes a lot of adjustment and over time I think it'd wear out quite quickly. So. I think other solutions would be quite, quite
quite good, maybe better. Uh, one solution would be a solenoid valve, which would be electric, and that would use a sensor on the flywheel to sense uh, where the engine was in its stroke, and then that could inject the steam or pressurised air when needed. Another good thing about that is you could use computer control to actually um, uh, advance the input of air or steam, depending on how fast the air was going, which is actually what they do with the spark in normal petrol engines. Um, and then again, the main difficulties were caused by the design of the engine, um, such as the hole in the crank not being straight, uh, the metal that the engine is made of is fairly cheap, so the threads that I cut into it just stripped out quite easily, which is another reason I was using the clamp. Um, yeah, so this project's I've learned a lot. I've um, it's the first time I've built a proper me me mechanism from scratch, and uh, I've never actually machined anything that I've designed myself. So, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, any questions? So, how would you fit it to a generator? Would you put a belt on the flywheel or would you just like put a shaft out? Um, well, the crankshaft, crankshaft actually extends out of the other side of the engine, so it wouldn't be too hard. You could either put a bolt in like I've done with the, the crankshaft, or there's actually a tapered. Um, end which yeah. has a slot in it for a key, so you could do that. That's slightly harder to machine, but it is possible. If you were to scale this up, uh, what could it possibly power if it was running at its um, So, calculated maximum power is about three and a half horsepower, um, which is actually enough to generate mains voltage. Um, so, what you could do is you could actually use it on a small motorbike or scooter. Um, I worked out steam would actually produce more power than petrol, um, which is quite funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, so generation, you could generate mains voltage at about 10 amps, so not the full 13, but um, in countries where mains voltage is half what we have, which is 110 volts, um, then it could produce the full <coughs> current. What about the noise? We could do about noise. It is quite loud. The video doesn't really get across how loud it is. Um, in the same way as a normal engine, you could put an exhaust on it and a silencer. That would be quite easy. Um, just some baffles to sort of slow down the air as it came out and make it a lot quieter. A part of the <clears throat> practical knowledge you have learned in theory, theoretical part, what things you have learned from working on it? <clears throat> There's a lot of forces involved that are a lot higher than you think for such a small engine. Mm -hmm. um, one part of my sort of conversion was to turn the crankcase into a wet sump to oil the engine. Normally the oil would be in the fuel um, and it would pass through the, the crankcase. But what I did was actually form a puddle basically of oil in the bottom which would get picked up by the crank and flung around. Um, but I think when I was running the engine, that actually slowed it down quite a lot. That wouldn't be some interference that it would have normally. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, the I think it ran a lot slower thanks to that. Um, thanks to that, due to that. Um, which isn't great, and I'd have to find a different way of oiling it. I thought one way to do it would be um, the same way they did in steam engines, which is essentially a ring with a venturi that goes through it. And the steam passes through the venturi and picks up oil as it goes through. It's a really thick tar-like oil, and it, it sort of melts down with the heat of the steam and then coats everything inside the engine. Um, and essentially, or eventually, it will come out of the engine with the steam, but it keeps the inside coated without any interference. Do you think possibly, as you said it will run with steam, you could make, or like if you wanted to further your project, make a steam, like a model of steam engine? I could do, yeah. Um, this engine's about as powerful. I don't know if you've seen like those mini trains they get um, where, where the front is just about big enough for one person. Um, I take kids around, but that's this is about as powerful as one of those engines. So that that would be possible, yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.